Shalom, Israel. It's your brother Marcus G back with yet another truth for thought. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High. I must give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High. Secondly, you may have saw the video prior to the intro video in regards to the young princess. Um, Israel, we, 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 we are um, under attack in many different ways. Right now today, we know. Um, we are asking not only the royal family, but any and everyone, if you have any information in regards to the whereabouts of the princess from that video that you please notify either myself, the Instagram, um, some of y'all have my email, the email, or my beloved brother, King Mike Malice, um, again, either my Instagram. Now, with that, this is actually like an extension of last week's truth of all, which is in regards to medical insight. So last week I uh, had a little amount of scripture in there. This week is actually less scripture and it's some of the same, it's the same, some of the same scripture that you heard just last week. Because this week I'm gonna, I left out last week with um, treatment modalities, which are in the Bible, Paralympics 14, um, which highlighted the use of certain natural things to treat ailments, such as cedar wood and hyssop. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to I'm going to look at some things of the going to look at medications that are in the treatment modalities of two things for sure that ail people of Israelite descent right now today. I'm going to look at two, two things kind of a little more in depth. And then I'm going to share with you all something that I um, personally did on a Microsoft Word page um, in regards to certain herbs and plants. Um, in between us looking at those things, because we, I'm gonna compare the way that the Western hemisphere or the practice of medicine today how they address these things and in that spreadsheet, or well, not even the spreadsheet, but in the Word document, you're going to see things that you can do that are natural, um, things that you can ingest that are natural, that do the same thing, and you're going to find out why it is bad. why it is worse to, much worse to do it in one of those ways, either the way it's modern medicine is practiced today or via herbs or plant and plants. We're gonna see which one is by far much worse. And you're gonna know why. That's, that is the key, knowing why or the how of something that is the key and that is something that i want to go into and on with you today so first and foremost i'm going to uh share my screen and we're going to get into the scripture a little bit later but i want to share my screen because we're going to start right now. right now in the world let me explain to you what you're looking for. Right now in the world, 
There are certain ways that people are treated for hypertension or as more commonly said, high blood pressure. This is something that plagues my people. It definitely does. Um, I will tell you that the two things I'm going to address directly, which are high blood pressure and diabetes. One of the first things that you can do, and if you are an Israelite and know you are an Israelite and are walking righteously, meaning in the, in the law, statutes, and commandments, there's a dietary law. That dietary law is there for a reason. It would avoid a lot of things. But unfortunately, a lot of us came into the truth after some bad practices, even that which we ingested or we ate. So we had to change that to go according to the dietary law, okay? So both of these, diabetes and hypertension, I will tell you one of the first treatment modalities that I, as a caregiver, would tell anyone is we need to make some lifestyle changes. Let's look into making some lifestyle changes. And I will assess what you eat, what you ingest, how often you ingest things. Because it is written, even when Yahawashah was tempted by the deceiver, he said, there's some stones right here. Yahawashah was fasting. He said, there's some stones right here. You've been fasting all this time. If you be the son of the Most High, you can turn these stones into bread. This was Yahawashah's answer. Man does not survive off of bread alone. And that's a summation of it. So the amount that you just, just because there's food in the house doesn't mean you have to eat it. That, 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 that does not equate to that. And I'm saying this and a lot of people probably be like, well, that's common sense. Trust me, I'm saying it for a reason. I have seen the latter. That is a bad practice that I've had to help people to break. So I look at what you're ingesting, the frequency at which you're ingesting, when you're ingesting it, how much of it are you ingesting, things like that. And I normally tell people we finna go by the dietary law, point blank. This, these are things you can eat. These are things you can't, and this is why. And I go straight to the scripture, we read. Okay, so back to what I was talking about. Now that I got that little out of the way, as far as things that can be done, if you have, hypertension or diabetes, first thing that I would look at is lifestyle changes. What I'm eating, my general practices. Do I smoke? Stop smoking. There's a reason for that because we don't, I'm going to get into some more detailed information as to why. Um, little things like that. Okay. So what we're seeing right here on my screen is medications. And I think, oh, actually they say it. Drugs used to treat high blood pressure. Now this is the world that, that that's how they titled it. I didn't title this. I'll have the link to this in the description. But these are drugs or medications that are used to treat high blood pressure. You see lisinopril, and if you have high blood pressure, you're probably going to hear 
one, if not two or three of these drugs that are your drugs. All right. The Centipril, I'm lot of pain, low sartan, hydrochlorothiazide, met, 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 metoprolol, excuse me, atinol, norvas, carvetolol, benicare. And I'm going to stop right there. The reason I'm going to stop right there is because there are people that take multiples of these drugs. They probably wondering why. Well, you're taking lisinopril because of how it affects the body. Don't talk about it. And you're taking, let's say you're taking lisinopril and amlodipine. And you're taking amlodipine because of how it affects the body. Now, last Sabbath, in my last truth for thought, I talked about this thing known as metabolism. Basically, anything, including a drug that you put into your body, you have to eventually get it out of your body. The thing about these medications is because they are chemical based again i talked about the science behind medicine just last Sabbath. they're based on a chemical reaction to force your body to do something well what lisinopril forces your body to do in the same as what amlodipine forces your body to Yet, what they the reason you're taking the two of them is because them working together gets quote unquote the desired effect. But I say to you again, Israel, everything that you must put into your body, your body must metabolize. A lot of this stuff, your body doesn't metabolize for years after the first dose. So you, let's say you've been taking just one of these pills for the last 10, 15 years. How long before you truly get this drug out of your system? Again, they call it a drug. So let's get a little background on um, lisinopril. We're going to look at the first two, lisinopril and amlodipine. So, with lisinopril, I want to get this part right. Again, they call it a drug. The drug works by helping decrease tightness in blood vessels, allowing the flow of the blood more smoothly and the heart to pump more efficiently. Though the drug is super helpful in controlling high blood pressure, there are still some strange side effects to watch out for. Now, that says what the drug but it doesn't say how. So we'll look up here. Lisinopril, and I'm gonna be reading from right here. Lisinopril, an anti-angiotensin converting enzyme, or what we call an ACE inhibitor, is one of the most common medications used to manage high blood pressure. So what it does, is it inhibits an enzyme. There's a chemical process that happens in you that makes a certain enzyme be produced. Again, it's chemically induced. That even that chemical, you must metabolize. All right. 
you have to be real careful with high blood pressure medications. And those who have high blood pressure, I'm going to say some things you've heard before. If you're prescribed to take one, you take one, but you notice about, and you take it in the morning, you notice about midday, but you have this extreme headache and you know it's got to be because of my pressure. Don't take a second. You can bottom yourself out. because you will force this enzyme to be excreted to such a degree that your blood pressure goes from what would be normal for you at that point in time, because your blood pressure is elevated, to down to what would be normal to a healthy individual and even further down, giving you high bulb tension which is not good. Again, all of this is because of this chemical that it's forcing your body to do these things. So let's look at some side effects with this drug. Patients with hypertension or high blood pressure the first thing that I said, I just said a headache. You can, you can, and that's the other thing. Having high blood pressure will cause you to have a headache. But look at this. Taking the drug itself. A side effect of the drug is a headache. Or dizziness, cough, fatigue, diarrhea, upper respiratory tract infection, nausea. With a with fixed combination preparation, muscle cramps. I have seen this before. Asthenia, that was crazy. Orthostatic effects and paresthesia. Now a lot of people say, "What is orthostatic effects?" Um, orthostatic effects are where when you're sitting down, you feel normal, but then when you stand up, because of this certain change in pressure. You get lightheaded and dizzy. All right. So that's what they would tell you as a patient. But let's go and let's look at some of the side effects that healthcare professionals look for. The most common is consistent hypertension. Well, the, the most very common is consistent hypertension. A common side effect from taking lisinopril is chest pain, agina pectoris, orthostatic hypotension, what I told you about standing up, and palpitations. None of these are good. All of these are heart-related. So if you smoke, but you have hypertension or high blood pressure, let me explain to you what smoking does. Smoking hardens the arteries. Now, if you remember when I first went over the first part about the Cinefril, it says the drug works by decreasing tightness in blood vessels. Well, by hardening your arteries, you harden it a different way than the natural way because you harden it by causing the buildup of plaque in your body. All your blood vessels to a degree have a muscularity to them. Some more so than others. If you cut open an artery, it's going to shoot out very much pressurized, very much muscular. However, if you cut a vein, it's going to ooze out. Not as much pressure, 
not as much muscularity, but still some muscularity there. All the way down to capillaries to a degree have a muscle, a layer of muscle tissue to them, okay? Here are some of the uncommon things that people who take this particular drug, lisinopril, that a healthcare giver or healthcare professional have seen or will see. And they actually give you percents of these things. You see 10% or more for the very common. The common is one to 10%. The uncommon is 0.1 to 1%. I want to ask you, Israel, is 0 0.0000000000000, however many zeros you want to put, one? Is that still a percent? Is there still a chance that this can happen? Zero point one to one percent uncommon angioneurotic edema. That is the buildup of fluid. Now you're starting to have some fluid retention around the heart. Myocardial infarction, in layman's terms, a heart attack. Lisinopril, the drug used to treat high blood pressure, can cause a heart attack. Cerebrovascular accident, a stroke. In fact, those two, I'll tell you, the way what something that the medical field had us calling this a heart attack and a brain attack point blank palpitations meaning the heart is palpating it's, it's you're an irregular or an arrhythmia and which means irregular heartbeat it's an irregular irregular movement contraction and retractions of the heart Tachycardia, a fast heartbeat, and extra. it's not SVT or supraventricular tach, but it's just regular tachycardia, just a fast heartbeat. Raynaud's phenomenon. Here we go. Y'all know how I feel about where it's like phenomenon. Irony incidents and this is medically induced or chemically induced through this medicine that's just cardiovascular wrong because this drug can cause you some things to happen in multiple facets namely anywhere the blood goes i'm going to prove it now that's the heart Cardiovascular means the heart, the blood vessels of the heart. Let's go to renal. For those who don't know, renal means basically your kidneys. Your blood gets filtered in said kidneys. That's where some blood goes. This drug is made to loosen the blood vessels. So the blood goes to the kidneys through blood vessels. Let's look at some common and very rare things that a caregiver, someone like myself, would look for for someone who's taken the center. The most common, one to ten percent, creatinine increase by at least ten percent. So your, cre your creatinine goes up, that we'll know. Once we see your creatinine up, we'll, we'll probably ask you, do you take lisinopril if, they, if we don't already know? And we'll be taking you to, or if you're 
if you're if it's a paramedic speaking to you will be taken to the hospital they need to adjust your medication either that or you took too much of your medication very rare renal insufficiency and if you have renal insufficiency for enough time guess what happens now you go into renal failure that means dialysis and i'm gonna leave the link to this so you can go and read it for yourself but i want you to understand this drug causes a chemical reaction in the body and the body must get all of this stuff out of it, including those chemicals that cause this chemical reaction out of it, all right? But this is just lysinable. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna look at a lot of things because they're very common. So let's look at amylotta. Here we go. Amylotapine. And remember, I said you might take two of these together. We saw that lisinopril was an ACE inhibitor. This amylotapine, though, is a calcium channel blocker. I want to stop you so you can understand this. Calcium is something that is naturally craved by the body. This chemical blocks the calcium channel receptor. Reduces the rate at which calcium enters the heart and blood vessel walls. When calcium enters the air, these areas at a slower rate, the blood vessels relax thus causing the same effect that you saw with the centipril, but in a different way, which is why you might take the centipril and amlodipine together. One that says to me, you don't even know how to head fix this. Two, it says, not only am I taking one chemical, now I'm taking another chemical that's forcing my body to do something totally different to achieve the desired effect. Yet I gotta metabolize all of this out of me. Let me keep going. When calcium, well, I'll reread it. The heart can pump more efficiently and blood pressure is reduced based on stopping your body, your calcium receptors, from receiving the calcium. Now, I'm gonna say again, calcium is something that the body naturally craves. So if you deprive it of calcium, it starts a domino effect or something we call a downward spiral. All from taking one drug, hoping to get a desired effect. Amlodipine is a specific type of calcium channel blocker. It is known as a dihydro, dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. While non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers may slow down a patient's heart rate, dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers are not associated with this change. This includes amlodipine. Okay, so that's what amlodipine does. That's how amlodipine does it. Let's look at some side effects of amlodipine. Look at some side effects of amlodipine. Anxiety and depression, hypertension treatment. That's what we need. That's what we need. 
Uh, that's the OTC. Those are over the counters. Let me go back. Let me go back because I had this already set up. Let me go back to, yeah, that's what I need. Go back to this. Because I had it up there. Obviously, I made a mistake. Side effects of that lot. And I just want you all to see what these side effects are. This is that over there. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. For the consumer, side effects include edema fluid retention notice both of these drugs can cause a retention of fluid or fluid overload those things can lead to because it goes wherever the blood goes congestive heart failure that fluid retention can cause a heart attack from the pressure remember i told you all about that pericardial synthesis that I did, the myocardial paracentesis that I did, for, uh, do it correctly, which is fluid, the fluid around the heart that's gotten infected, well, having extra fluid like that gives it the chance to get infected, blood goes through there, dizziness, flushing, palpitations, again, directly dealing with the heart, fatigue, nausea, abdominal pain, somnolence, edema, flushing, palpitations, and somnolence may be more common in women than men. Edema may be less frequent with concomitant ACE inhibitors or angiotensins or angiotensin to receptor antagonist therapy. This is what a healthcare professional most commonly, again, you get a headache from having high blood pressure, but from taking amlodipine, and let's just say you're taking it alone, it will cause a headache as well as edema, rash, fatigue, and dizziness, cardiovascular, myocardial, it can cause a heart attack. Yet again, it can cause chest pain, arrhythmia, which is what I said, an irregular heartbeat, such as bradycardia, which is a slow heartbeat. Vent ventricular tachycardia, that right there lets you know you're having a heart attack. That's when, if you ever hear someone in the medical profession looking at what your heart is doing and they say, oh, he's showing tombstones. That is signs that you are having what's known as the widow maker. That is one of the most painful heart attacks you can have because it's dealing with the biggest muscle of the ventricle, the biggest side. Because the ventricle, there are two different ventricles. Atrial fib, a fib, that's when the top of your heart is just quivering. It's quivering, but it's quivering because of an electronic impulse, because those cells, your heart cells, are, for lack of better terms, electrolyzed. So you have these premature firings of those cells, which are at the top of the heart. And the way the heart works is the rub and the dub, rub, dub, rub, dub. Rubbed up. That's what you hear when you have a stethoscope up and you put it to someone's chest right over the heart. You'll hear rubbed up, rubbed up. Well, what fires first is the atrium. 
That's the rub. Then the dub is the ventral. So in perfect, the way that the Most High made you, it'll be rubbed up, rubbed up, rubbed up. Just like that, at a normal rate, under a normal pressure. When you have atrial fibrillation, you have rub, 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 dub. Which can lead to further complications, all from taking this drug. It can happen. Edema occurred in 14.6% of female patients given the drug compared to 5.6% of male patients. Women, from taking this drug, you retain fluid almost three times as much as a man. and was more likely to occur in patients given the 10 milligram dose compared to the five and the 2.5 milligram doses. So let's look at the very common things, which happens 10% or more of the times, that's edema. And you see up to 14.6%, again, that's for the females, as low as 5.6% for me. The common, what happens one to 10% of the time, palpitations and ankle edema. So you have pitting edema, that's what ankle edema is, pitting edema down around the ankles. It's where you can actually take the end of your finger and depress like that into your skin and you pull your finger out and it pops right back there. Or you'll see it filling, filling with fluid to feel back out. What's uncommon? And this is just cardiovascular. This is just around the heart. And in, in, in when you are looking at just the heart, uncommon is hypotension. It will cause the reverse of the desired effect you will go from being hypertensive to hypotensive, which is what's known as bottoming you out. And chest pain. Very rare, less than 0.101%. Myocardial infarct, heart attack, arrhythmia, including a slow heartbeat or a an arrhythmia or irregular heartbeat, including a bradycardia or slow heartbeat, ventricular tachycardia, a fast heartbeat, which it's only your ventricles firing. That's the other thing that I meant to tell you. That's what's pronounced when I'm, when I'm looking at a monitor and I see VTAC or ventricular tachycardia. Atrial fibrillation, vasculitis, cardiac failure, total cardiac, everything in regards to the heart and blood, total failure. Pulse irregularity, extra systoles, and hot flushes. And a lot of people ask, well, why would that happen? Because this drug blocks something that the body craves to get a desired effect via a chemical process, all right? So I want you to keep those in mind because those are how just two ways that today medically people treat or doctors treat hypertension, okay? So now I want to go to this right here. It's 
we're going to talk about diabetes. All right, we're going to talk about diabetes. Insulin is the most common type of medication used in type 1 diabetes. And I'm just going to talk about type 1. If you have type 1 diabetes, your body can't make its own insulin. Now, I want to stop because it says that the body naturally makes insulin. And it's not that your body can't make its own insulin. It's your body's not making a sufficient amount of insulin. As the body grows, it mandates more of certain things, kind of like calcium and it craving calcium. Your body craved less calcium when you were five years old than it did, than it would if you're 15 years old or 25 years old or 35 years old. Well, the body makes insulin all the time. The question is, is it a sufficient amount of insulin? The goal of the treatment is to replace, listen to that word, replace the insulin that your body can't make. So again, they're saying that your body can, this right here shows exactly what I, I said, that your body makes insulin. It may not be sufficient, but this will replace the insulin which your body can't make. So that, that you make isn't sufficient enough. So we're going to put a chemical in you to replace what naturally is insulin in the natural body. They're gonna put a chemical to replace insulin. Insulin is also used in diabetes type two treatment. It's given by injection and comes in different types. The type of insulin you need depends on how severe your insulin depletion is. Again, that Further says your body is creating insulin, just not a sufficient amount. Unlike this initial statement, which says, if you have type 1 diabetes, your body can't make its own insulin. That's not true. Your body has always been able to make insulin. It always has. It always will. Whether that amount is sufficient or not, that is the question. So, Short acting insulin. We're just going to look at the first one. We're going to look at human. It's just regular insulin. However, it can't be regular insulin. That's what they're saying it is because it literally says the goal of treatment is to replace the insulin that you can't make or you're not able to produce. So in order to replace something, it's got to be something different. So this is not regular insulin. Regular insulin, your body already makes. So let's look at humulin. Let's look at humulin. This is another reason you know it's made to replace your regular insulin. Humulin N is a man-made form of a hormone that is produced in the body. Further proving you already produce it. It's not a sufficient amount. Well, they want to replace it, and those are the words they use, by a man-made hormone. And guess what? That man-made hormone, you got to excrete it out of your body at some point in time. 
or it'll just and a lot of these stay in you for a long time. A lot of the drugs that people are taking on the regular stay in your body a long time. And the more you take it, the more built up it is in your system, the longer it's going to take to get it out of you. Now it's going to tell you what insulin does. I know, but I'm for the sake of knowledge, I'm going to go ahead and go through it. Insulin is a hormone that works by lowering levels of glucose, sugar in the blood. Insulin isophane is an intermediate acting insulin that starts to work within two to four hours after injection. Now, insulin isophane is human. Notice it has a chemical name. I talked about and all of these drugs are based off of chemicals and a chemical process in the body because medicine today as I said last Sabbath, it's based off of science. And we talked about in First Timothy. In fact, that verse is First Timothy 6 and 20. I talk, the Bible talks about science. I read that particular scripture just last week. So, Let's look at some side effects. Oh, also, I do want you to see this. Humor is also used, although grown-ups take it, is used to improve blood sugar control in adults and children with diabetes mellitus. Now, these side effects you finna see can happen not only in the grown-up or the adult, but also in the ped or pediatric or child. So let's look at some of these side effects. You might see some things that's a little similar. Fluid retention. Weight gain, swelling in your hands or feet, feeling short of breath. Low potassium, leg cramps, constipation, irregular heartbeats. And a lot of folks will probably be like, okay, you say low potassium. Potassium too, just like calcium. It's something that your body craves. You normally get potassium from things like bananas, a fruit of the earth. Read about that, and we're gonna get in, we I'm gonna get the whole scriptures again. This this truth of thought. But a fruit of the earth, a fruit of the lips. Remember that I'm saying it in that fashion. Well, if you eat potassium, if you eat bananas and eat too many bananas. You can cause these same things to happen. That's from having hyperkalemia. It means too much potassium. If you don't, you'll have low potassium or hypo. That's what these things are. Both hyper and hypo do the same thing. They cause cramps, they cause constipation, irregular heartbeats, fluttering in your chest. A lot of folks say, well, why does that happen? Because potassium affects the muscles. The muscles are what crave potassium. And your heart is one big muscle. An electrified muscle. For, I mean, just as simply as it can be put. Let's go on and read some more of these things. And again, these can be in children and in the adults. Low blood sugar. It means you, that's what another way of bottoming out, but on insulin, you've 
taking too much insulin or the insulin is too strong or your body produces more insulin than the doctor doctor thought he did and he made your prescription too strong. Weight gain, swelling in your hands and feet, itching, mild skin rash or thickening or hollowing of the skin where you injected the medicine. Now, what I don't like is what they didn't put in here is anaphylaxis and anaphylactic shock. The reason I don't like that is because though that is the truth, those things can happen. Those are directly related to having an allergic reaction. And it starts by anaphylaxis. It then, again, I'm circling the drain, circles down to anaphylactic shock. Okay? So, now that we saw all of those things, I'm going to share with you. Stop sharing my screen real quick. And I'm going to share it again. So I'm going to get some scriptures. Now I'm going to go to some scriptures. And again, I, I, I said last week and I'll say it again this week that um, medicine is based off science. So I guess I'll start with that. We'll go to 1 Timothy first. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. And I want you to understand when you're taking these chemicals, it's based off of science and we're finna read about science. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and opposition of science falsely, so-called. Timothy is being advised to avoid such things. So our people start taking these medications and they start finding out other things are starting to shut down or not properly work well if you take, for instance, amlodipine and you notice as you get older, things are breaking down. It's because, again, calcium, and that's a calcium channel blocker is something that other parts of the body crave as well, but you're blocking those receptors. So it's like the mechanic who fixes your radiator, but then while fixing the radiator, he stabs a hole in the holes going to the radiator. So you come back. While he's fixing the holes to the radiator, because he has to put a new holes to the radiator in now. While he's fixing the holes to the radiator, he makes a mistake and ships into the water pump. Or what? And he doesn't. It didn't. He made a mistake, but the effects of this new hose cause the water pump. If the water pump can't take the pressure. That stops that from working. You start having these other things that happen. You've been taking amlodipine for 10 years. You go into renal failure. Now, not only are you a hypertension patient, but you're also a dialysis patient. And that happens so often because the same things are happening. You keep going back to that mechanic. And he's saying he's fixing you. He's breaking you down more and more. Point blank. All because of his science. Well, my science tells me that this should fix this. But you're breaking something in. Well, I can go, I can fix that too. Hold on, come back, take two of these, and call me in the morning. 
I want to go from there. I want to go back to Isaiah. Because we finna start talking about some of these other things, these other treatment modalities, these natural treatment modalities that the most high put here. So I'm gonna start at Isaiah 57 and 19. Isaiah 57 and 19. And it reads, I create the fruit of the lips. I think I said that earlier in regards to banana and potassium. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. I, I love this verse because it proves to me as someone who loves to take care of people and their ailments, at the most high first, he run all of it. Second, he put something here for you to take care of in me and everything. And it's not a chemical. As we read back, looking at humulin, these are man-made things. I'm talking about the most high made things, not man made things. So from there, I'm going to go back to Genesis 1. Genesis 1, and we're going to get verses 11 and 12. And they read, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. I want to stop right there. I'm going to tell you, there is no reason, I mean, well, no coincidence or irony that the Most High made sure that little phrase, whose seed is in itself, is there. I've always loved grace. But now I don't go buy grapes from the store because there are what's called seedless grapes. And that's man-made. You want to know how I know? The most high, the fruit that he made, its seed is in itself. You ever go get a tomato and you don't see any seeds. If you ever go get a lemon and you don't see any seeds on the inside. You go get a kiwi and you don't see those little seeds. And all of these things that I'm saying are good for you. You're going to see it. He's going to even say at the end of this verse, well, at the end of 12, and it was good. But nowadays, these man made his science. Just told him, I can make a, I can make a grape too. But the one thing about his grape, he can't make it like the most high. He can't make it with a seed on the inside of it. You can't make a seed. Man is still trying to find out how to do that though. They are. If you don't believe it, one of these days, research stem cell research. And it's going to take you into a plethora of avenues of things that man is trying to do with stem cells. Now, here in God forsaken Babylon, supposedly that type of research is illegal. Yet, I'm telling you, I can literally take you to facilities that are still conducting stem cell research. Y'all may have heard how man is trying to clone men. 
guess what sales they're attempting to do it with? Stem cells. Let me keep going. Upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, which means even these herbs, these plants and these herbs. There's a seed for it, which is why man cannot, man cannot imitate the chamomile plant. Man cannot imitate blue bag. Man cannot imitate all these things that the most high. And the tree yielding fruit again, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Just like I said, you're going to see these things are good for you because he even said, he saw to it that it was good. I want to go from there to Genesis. We're going to stay in Genesis 1. We're just going to drop down to verse 29. And this is the most high speed. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, meaning you have all these herbs and it has a seed. You can continue to have these herbs for generations. which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. You find it, you get a peach tree, right? Peaches drop from it. The peach bears a seed. You can take that seed, plant it, and now, in due season, in its season, you'll all of a sudden have two peace trees. That's just the truth. Man can't imitate that. No matter how hard they are trying through their science, they can't. To you, it shall be for me. It means this, these are the things. These things you can ingest. These things you can ingest. Now I want to go to Genesis 9. So we stand in the book of Genesis, going to chapter 9 and getting verse 3. Every moving thing that lives shall be meat for you, even as the green herb that I have given you all things. Again, most hospital. But again, when I got to this verse just last Sabbath, I said the common thing that you want to start hearing is herbs. Okay? So let's go to Psalms 104 and 14. And again, this ain't going to have that many verses in it because it's still some other things. Because we looked at treatment modalities for both hypertension and diabetes per medicine as it's practiced today. And I told you I got some things I put together on a Word document that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to do just that. Psalms 104 and verse 14. And it reads... He causes the grass to grow for the cattle. This is in reference to the most high. An herb for the service of man. That word service can mean a number of things. It can mean the herb for just ingestion, just as just food, or to treat some things that he may bring forth food out of the earth. So, the last scripture I want to get before I go and share with you 
what the medical world has blatantly done in people's face and they haven't even noticed it. I want to go to Isaiah 5 and 20. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. And it reads, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now, if you remember, back in Genesis 1, we read where when the Most High created these herbs, these fruits, and the grass, he said it was good. Did he not? So now, I'm going to share my screen with you again. And I'm going to show you something that you can go see right now. Get to it. So I'm going to share my screen. It's right here. You see that it says, and this is in the Wikipedia, right? And I'm going to leave the link for this because it's some good stuff on here. In fact, everything on here, per the most high, is good. I don't care if you see, like I said last, um, last Sabbath, where the quote unquote wise men of the world have said there's not enough evidence to show, regardless of what any quote unquote wise man said, the Most High himself said these things are good. But I want you to look at something. I want you to see this. See this right here? I talked about this last Sabbath. This is part of the sign or symbol for the medical world. But if you notice, it's next to these, this orange looking stuff, which You've probably been taught when you see things like orange and yellow, that means caution, warning, something like that. I want to read to you. Now, again, this says a list of plants used in herbalism, which the Most High said was good. And I'm telling you, the medical field wants to say it's evil. That's why I went to Isaiah 5. That's exactly why I went to Isaiah, because we finna read this. This is per the medical field. This particular, this article may present fringe theory. I'm an Israelite, I am. When I talk about prophecy in the Bible, people call me a conspiracy theorist. The world does that. Look at what the world is saying. Without giving appropriate weight to the mainstream view. Well, what's the mainstream view? These people right here, the medical world. <laughs> and explaining the responses to the fringe theories. All right, I'm gonna drop down to this one. This particle needs more medical reference for verification or relies too heavily on primary sources. Basically, these people right here are saying, There's not enough evidence to prove that these are the wise men. 
And I again, I went over the, the rod of Caduceus and the rod of uh, Acephalus, which has a serpent. How I run. In, in Genesis, what tempted Eve or what was the description of? It wasn't an actual snake. But it literally says a serpent. So the reason I'm going to leave this is because kings and queens, all of Israel, all of princes and princesses, every bird on the face of the planet is listed here. All of which the Most High himself said was good. All of it, the Most High said, is of service. To Israel. So now, stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna leave the link to this for everyone that it, that wants to research it for yourself, and you're going to see. 99% of all those herbs, you'll see there isn't sufficient proof. So I want to ask you, Israel, the people of old, the Israelites of old, they treated things. I even showed it in Leviticus 14 where there was a treatment of certain leprosies with hyssop, cedar wood, and a grub. But it says scarlet, but scarlet is a grub in that context. Not the color of red, like you can find it in other contexts of the Bible. Now, all of these things the Most High said was good. And I'm going to go as far as this. I'm not going to say medicine says, it, says it's not or that it's evil. <laughs> but science, man, science, it does say that. So now I'm going to share my screen again. And I'm going to go over some things. And I know this doesn't have as much scripture as my other truths and thoughts, but this is some, these are some things that I wanted to. Not that I wanted to, the most I put on my heart to share with you all. And again, it's just the first of many. So we're going to look at some commonly used plants, which per Genesis, generate their own seed. Most of the plants are pollinated by, you know, bees and so. And herbs with their own seed. First one is chamomile. And look at how, now, this, I got this from the world. Chamomile is said. Sounds just like the world, because they'll say there's not enough proof that this is the case. I'm telling you, chamomile does this. Takes away weariness and pain, inflammation of the bowels. The oil from the flower can be used against many pains and aches, including joint cramps. Chamomile is also helpful in healing migraines and regulating. Painful menstrual fluids. A lot of folks might ask, how? How does it do? Well, this is, first of all, this is natural. Second, that which, um, that which lisinopril does, this does now. 
it works with the blood vessels. It's crazy. It's crazy. Cinefor. Used to reduce inflammation, it can also treat sore mouths and ulcers. The juice is known to aid jaundice. Those of you who may not know, and some of you who may, if you have something like lupus, and you have what's known as jaundicing of the eyes, that means the white of your eyes turns yellow. There's something naturally to treat them, as well as helping hoarseness of the throat and cough, cynic foil can be applied to painful joints, which means as a topical, you can literally rub the oil from the plant onto your elbow that's been aching you for so long and receive relief. Again, it takes me back to Isaiah 57 and 19 because you got to understand all of these things were created by the Most High. And the end of Isaiah 57, 19 is Most High said this, and I will heal you. Most High put this stuff here to heal. Yet my people run to get a chemical and have a chemical process ha happen in their body that then breaks down another part of their body. So they got to go get another chemical process to take care of that. That breaks down another and it's a downward spiral. For lack of better terms, they're killing Israel. They're killing us. It's killing us. A lot of folks don't, don't know that the CV-19 vaccine, before it was launched here, it was launched over in the UK, and in the UK, they turned it away because more people were dying from CV, from the, the vax itself, than from the disease process. They're killing That's why when they first rolled it out here in God forsaken Babylon, they tried to buy you off. But the Bible tells you about a gift. And to be weary of a gift, the Bible differentiates between a gift and a reward. But if you have to be tempted with a gift, here for $1,200, if you take this vaccination, the world always proves the Bible. And that's all with medicine. Everything I'm doing today, the title of this, Medical Insight Part 2. Medical Insight for you is Part 2. Columbine. Because Columbine is slightly poisonous, its astringent properties are mainly exported in lotions and used externally, and that is very true. Fever Few, known as an effective treatment for migraine, headaches, and fevers. It may also help to ease diseases like arthritis. I have a whole list of things. Foxglove. That's just, I just keep going with it. Pure form of the plant is used to strengthen cardiac contractility and regulates heart rhythm naturally. Instead of giving someone the chemical amlodipine or epinephrine, let's say epinephrine to speed your heart up, or for any type of arrhythmia, which you saw can be caused by 
amlodipine, and lisinopril, and even with humor. The Most High put something natural, and he said it was good right here for it to regulate heart rhythms, that tachycardia, that ventricular tachycardia, that bradycardia, all those, and slow heart rate, fast heart rate, and irregular heart rate. And one of those, you should have saw in tachycardia too. Yeah, I saw bradycardia, tachycardia, and ventricular ta um, tachycardia. That one right there, you don't never want to see. The pain alone from VTAC. because you're actively having heart attack when you're in attack or ventricular tachycardia. Let me keep going. Goldenrod can be used as treatment for painful menstruation, arthritis, and eczema. Externally, it can be applied to skin ulcers to stimulate healing. Ladies Mantle, this herb has been used to cure excessive menstruation. The root of Ladies Mantle has been recommended to stop bleed. Lavender prevents fainting and allies nausea. In the oil form, it is often used in therapeutic baths to reduce stress. Ladies, queens, y'all ever wonder why they lavender? Y'all always get lavender body um, uh, uh, bubble baths and, and, and lotions, and you probably never knew what it was doing for you if it's the natural. But now, there are some wise men that know that naturally this does this. And they'll put a label on a bottle that says it's lavender, but have chemically altered something. Be careful. Be not deceived. It can also lower blood pressure. Anybody had lavender tea before? To you, hypertensive Israelites, hypertensive people, no, at all. You ever try lavender tea? I'll tell you, I've had someone drink some lavender tea that also took their blood pressure medicine that morning and they almost bottomed out. That's because their blood pressure had lowered so much from the lavender tea on top of that. Blood, that, meant, that chemical that they took, I had to stop them from drinking it. I had to stop them from drinking it and pump them full of fluids. And this was at someone's home. Lavage. Lavage is used as a digestive. People with diverticulitis. Anybody out there with diverticulitis? Something like that. It eases inward pains. This herb is also known to diminish the redness of all. Pennyroyal. Pennyroyal is said to ease headaches. It has been used as a remedy for colicky pains in the abdomen. Those who have colic. It's crazy. It has also been known to ease the feverish symptoms that come with measles and whooping cough. Wait a minute. That would prove that way back then, because people of old were using Penny Royal, they were treating measles and whooping cough way back then, and they had to treat it with something. Hmm. They didn't have what man tries to utilize today. Poppy. 
Known to soothe, cause, and induce sleep. The petals are helpful in treating asthma, bronchitis, whooping cough, and angina. If it, Israel, if you hear any of these things, that please. This is some ins medical insight for you. Get a pen, get a paper, try some things now. I'm telling you as someone who utilized the fruits of the lips that the Most High put right here for you. Primrose, a sedative. Induces rest and sleep by reducing tension. How many of y'all knew it was a natural stress relief? An infusion of the root taken in a spoon in spoonful doses is effective in healing headaches. It has also been used for treating gout and rheumatism. Sounds like something that has been used for a long time because I'm telling you, gout and rheumatism, as you know it, those names are just something that man put on it within the, a certain amount of time, recent time. The people exhibited the signs and symptoms of both of those way back in ancient times. And look at how it was treated. Rosemary, been used to treat headaches, epilepsy, and poor circulation. Anybody out there ever, do I have any C's or C's, C's, seizing people out there? Anybody that get into status epilepticus, that's what epilepsy is. It can also be used as a disinfectant in the form of mouthwash and also to treat fever. It is also reported to stop dandruff and improve memory. Sage, helpful for head pain. Hoarseness and cough. It is one of the best known remedies for laryngitis, tonsillitis, and sore throat. But our people will go and buy lasagnas. An infusion of the herb sweetened with honey is, um, is mildly laxative and stimulates menstrual flow. I mean, and a lot of these can be made into teas. I promise you, I do it all the time. So, the cooling leaves of sore are known to allay thirst and aid in fever. These leaves also serve as a diuretic. When I was talking about the pitting edema, and this extra edema, the way that you get edema off or excess of fluid is with a diuretic. That's okay. I got some other diuretics I'm going to talk about a little later, right here on this same page. Vervain. Vervain is known to be a good remedy for coughing colds. It aids against wheezing and shortness of breath that comes with fevers. There's also what's known as blue vervain, which interacts directly with the central nervous system and is a natural painkiller. Wintergreen. Wintergreen is known for its cooling properties, flavoring everything from mouthwash to gum. Medicinally, it can be used topically on wounds and internally to aid ulcers in the kidney 
and bladder. The plant contains a natural, natural antiseptic. Woodruff can be taken for its tranquilizing effects to treat insomnia. Who, how many insomniacs I got out there? I'm telling you, I've seen all of this and more that I'm addressing in this truth of thought. I've seen it. How many of Israel, how many of you have been told you have insomnia, that you are an insomniac? Used as an infusion, it can strengthen the stomach and remove obstructions from the colon. A natural laxative that's so strong, it will move all out obstructions. Not a colonic, but Woodruff. And the most I said it was good. It and all the other herbs that I've ever said, he said, they were all good. Yarrow, used topically for wounds, cuts, and abrasions. An infusion of yarrow is known to speed recovery from severe bruising. Yarrow flowers are used for various allergic mucus problems, including hay fever. My beloved brother, King Mike, I know you're probably going to say, yep, yep, that's, that's me. Here you go. It's here. It always has been Israel. These things the most high put here from the very beginning. So now that I'm going to look at some diuretic herbs and spices. You got roselle, horsetail, black common, dandelion, caraway, parsley. I make, look, I make, listen. My queen had to have her thyroid removed. She's been placed on Synthroid. Synthroid affects the body and so because of what it's trying to imitate or mimic, which was removed but the most high initially gave to her. It did so many things for the body. So I make teas for her. And she can attest, when she stops drinking the tea, shit don't go well. But when she's drinking these teas, When she's ingesting these good herbs, these good fruits of the lip, it's a beautiful day. I make parsley. I'll, I'll put parsley with maybe some mint. If she tell me, I feel a little bloated. I feel like I got a little water weight. I'll put a little mint just to give it a little minty taste. But I'll put mainly parsley and I'll boil it in a tea. She'll drink it down and she will, she again can attest to this. I feel so light now. I've been, I, now truthfully, I've been urinating all day. It's a natural diuretic. It's going to make you do that. Oregano, juniper, some diuretic foods. Listen to this. They're all fruits of the lip. Raspberry, pomegranate, garlic, and melon. Remember we talked about humulin for diabetes? Now I'm going to give you some natural, natural, Things for diabetes. Cinnamon, aloe vera, bitter melon, ginger, 
fenugreek, bilberry, sage, garlic, curry leaves, turmeric, rosemary, and jamun. We also talked about high blood pressure. Xenopril, all of it. Herbs for hypertension or high blood pressure. And I'm sure that I'm looking at some people with that in the face right now. Basil, parsley. If you put parsley in tea, you can be treating both hypertension and you can also be treating the retention of fluid or edema as the medical field terms. Let me keep going. Bacopa moneyeri, which is found in South Asia, garlic, thyme, and ginger. So Israel, I know normally my true for thoughts have like all this scripture, but this is an extension. This is part two to the true for thought from last Sabbath. And each time I come with different parts for it now, I'm going to be coming with certain herbs for certain ailments. Every time I do it from now on, and I do it, and it'll be called, again, Medical Insight Part 3 or Medical Insight Part 4. And I'm going to do many of these as I view these herbs to treat people right now today. And if you want to know my backstory, if you didn't see the truth of thought for last week, you'll get you. I, I urge you to go and see it. I have the link in the description. But I was basically taught by an elder. And to this day, I still wonder if he knew who he was, if he knew he was of the tribe of Asher. But I, I, I won't know until if the most high, if I am in that hopeful elect. He was in that hopeful leg, and I see him again. That's the only way I would know. So, with that, Israel, these are this is the medical insight I wanted or I had on my heart to bring to you for this truth and thought. A lot of people already do this. Uh, I'm on Instagram, very easy to. And I make myself extremely accessible for my nation. Um, and I want to stress that for my nation. I don't abhor or the scripture, any other nationality. But who I am definitely here for is for my nation. If for some reason you can't find, and I'm telling you, the most I put it here, if you can't find the herb or fruit of the lip for any ailment that you may have, I am readily accessible. I will actually leave my Instagram in the description this time. And I implore you, especially if you are of my nation, 
before you allow a chemical to break you down, because I promise you, it will break you down before you eventually break it down, which is metabolism. Again, I talked about it just last Sabbath, but it will break you down before you break it down. I urge you, do some research or reach out to me. And that is an invitation to the whole nation of Israel. So with that Israel, it's your brother, Marcus G. I hope you enjoy this blessed day of the Sabbath. And I bid you, Shalom. Till next time, be it the most high will. It's your brother, Marcus G. And I'm out.